U.S. Department to create new public school mandates demanding critical race theory be new norm. This is the Editor's Choice Report, and I am going to call this story on the video version critical race theory to be taught in all public schools according to the Department of Education. And for the top link for this Editor's Choice Report, well, it's this story right here, the U.S. Department of Education and what they plan on doing. And this is from freebeacon.com. Education Department proposal would flood public schools with woke curricula. And it's, uh, the excerpt from it is the Biden administration this week proposed a rule that would encourage public schools to adopt radical, racially driven curricula in American history and civics classes. The Department of Education, when, when they say encourage, I mean, if you don't, then they'll, they'll start doing economic penalties for you for not choosing. So basically, it is a mandate. The Department of Education on Monday proposed a rule that would prioritize federal funding for education groups that help schools develop and implement anti-racist, let's see here, get you down here, anti-racist, let's see, the, uh, anti-racist teaching standards. If the rule takes effect, the Office of Elementary and Secondary Education would increase grants to woke groups across the country. School districts in recent months have increased their efforts to weave critical race theory, the idea that America's political and economic systems are inherently racist, into K-12 curriculum standards. The Education Department's proposal signals that the Biden administration's the Biden administration's support for this trend. And, you know, I think I've said this uh, multiple times, and it bears repeating, and I will repeat it over and over and over again. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater on this. There is a lot of good stuff relatively it, it, I'll, I'll say this for for we christians who who operate in the civic which is what the freedom is is defined as and and primarily who we serve for although if you're not a christian we're you're more than welcome to, to to watch our shows and read our blogs whatever but that if you are for consensual exchange which bottom line we are for consensual exchange especially in the civic then there's a lot of things that need to be changed as far as how we how we understand our reality of power and our circumstances that we might be part of that put us in a position of of power over other individuals and there's a lot of good stuff in in critical race theory there's a there's some aspects of mindfulness that are very helpful i practice this type of mindfulness but i've been doing a lot of, of the good things that i like about critical race theory I have learned some of these things back in my early 20s. This is back in the 90s. I'm 52 years old. And I was uh, fully embroiled in post-structuralism and structuralism and postmodern thought. A number of, I was an artist. I was a, a language poet. And, and a lot of these things that I learned from that, I kind of applied to my life. And they're very constructive as far as uh, being aware of your, your circumstance, your reality of power, as I like to call it, uh, uh, compared to others. And when you understand that you are in a position of power advantage over others, you seek to not create what I call cooperative exchange, but rather consensual exchange. So you're not looking to take advantage of the power that you have over others. But I understood a long time ago that the power dynamic between individuals was far beyond race, although that is a significant factor, far beyond gender, although that is a significant factor, far beyond sexual preferences, although is, that is a significant factor. Uh, economics uh, was uh, one of the most uh, significant factors in terms of having that uh, power advantage, but also things that you don't talk about, such as your looks. The way that you look, the people that are attractive have, tr even across the board, if you are of, of any race or any sex of gender, that if you are one of the beautiful ones, so to speak, you have tremendous, tremendous, far more even, I would say, than, than the so-called white man does. If you are an attractive, a very attractive black woman, in most situations, you will have an advantage over a non-attractive white man in most in most situations, not all, man, many situations. The, the, the most pressing area in our areas in our life where there is significant imbalance, at least as far as race goes, really has to do with our our, our, our judicial system, our crime 
judicial system as well as our policing. There's significant improvement that have to be made there. But if you want to understand that this critical race theory thing, it borrows from legitimate pleas of the needy. This is Isaiah 32, 7, which I'll repeat over and over again. As for the scoundrel whose devices are evil, he plans wicked schemes to ruin the poor with lying words, even when the plea of the needy is right. So if you want to understand that these are these are lying scoundrels, that critical race theory is lying scoundrels, all you have to do is come to the reality that critical race theory teaches somehow that white people invented discrimination, that white people invented racism and bigotry, and that white males invented uh, misogyny, which is a load of crap. And if you know history, especially world history throughout the ages, what what we are identifying is called, well, I'm calling it majorityism. And there is a way to teach this awareness to human beings, to children, in, in, in a manner in which you are not demonizing and vilifying the nation state that they live in or their parents. And that is by talking about majorityism and also talking about majorityism throughout the ages, even amongst black Africa. There has been majorityism where a black African majority will 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 basically use its its power advantage over another a black minority to keep it in that position. This is throughout human history. So. There is a way to combat the plea of the needy without vilifying human beings. And the only reason that they're vilifying human beings is they want to control you. That is it. So uh, the other headlines for this uh, editor's, this is an editor's choice report that we get this first story from. And I'm just going to read you this, these headlines real quick. The U.S. Postal Service is monitoring American social media activity. That's from The Federalist. We have Senator Cotton to be to reintroduce bill cracking down on Chinese spying in American universities. That's from Daily Caller. EU outlines ambitious AI regulations focused on risky use. That's ChannelNewsAsia.com. And uh, from The Blaze, we have head of woke New York school fires teacher accuses him of lying about demonizing white people comments, but the teacher recorded their conversation. Hollywood former Press Association board member ousted after sharing article calling BLM a racist hate movie. And it is a racist hate movement uh, from the Federalist.com. And then finally, Norfolk officer docks and fired after donating anonymously to Kyle Rittenhouse Defense Fund. That's from... Actually, I, I missed that one. I didn't get that one. This is... Uh, this is legal insurrection. 